Hello, this is Archie Dunlop with Talking Astrology with Archie on Friday, June the 16th, 2023. Today, I want to talk a bit about stationary planets. A stationary planet is a planet that isn't moving. Now, this might seem strange. After all, the sun is at the centre of the solar system and the planets are, are always moving around the sun. They never stop. So how can it be that a planet can be stationary? Well, astrologers tend to look at the solar system from a geocentric perspective. You know, we're on Earth, so let's see what the planets are doing from Earth's perspective. And because we are looking at it from Earth's perspective, there will be times when the planets uh, start going backwards. They'll go backwards. Um, they'll sometimes slow down. And when they trans transition from, for example, going backwards to going forwards, there'll be a time when they actually stand still. Um, and the other way around, like, you know, tomorrow Saturn goes retrograde. And in that period, as it's going retrograde, it comes to a halt. So we can then say that tomorrow Saturn is stationary retrograde. And then it will keep going backwards. And then at a certain point, it will have gone back far enough. And then it will start going forward again. And that's when it will go be stationary direct, stationary as it is about to go forward again. So the planets can at times can be at a standstill. Um, so what implication does that have um, in astrology? Well, I use the analogy, Stephen Arroyo's analogy some time ago. Stephen Arroyo, astrological writer. Um, I read some of his books when I started learning astrology and he um, he used the analogy of a candle. Um, you know, if you put a thing, if you pass your finger through a candle flame, it doesn't hurt, it tends not to hurt because it's going quickly through the flame. However, if you were to stop your finger in the middle of the flame, you'd burn yourself. And in a way, that's the situation with a stationary planet. Um, the planet has stopped and it has stopped at potentially at a point in your horoscope. And so that point is going to potentially be fried. Um, OK, I don't mean that necessarily in a bad sense. It could be in a good sense, but that point is going to be strongly emphasised. So that might be how we would look at a stationary planet. And so what I'm going to do before I look at my forecast for today is I'm going to look at one example of of um, how a stationary planet might be working. Um, and I'm afraid um, I'm using a, a rather hackneyed example. Uh, this example is, yeah, it's the example of um, yeah, it's Prince Harry. Sorry, but I mean, it's not about him, really. It's absolutely not about him. I just want to use his chart as an example. So tomorrow, sorry, yeah, tomorrow Saturn goes stationary retrograde and it goes stationary retrograde at seven degrees, 13 minutes Pisces. So if we were to look at Harry's chart and we're asking a question, what does it mean for Prince Harry when Saturn goes retrograde at 713 Pisces. So we would look to see if Saturn is making any close aspects um, to anything in his chart. OK, I can't see anything immediate. Um, so what about the house position? So OK, so there's his second house cusp, 4, 8 
Pisces. So it's going stationary retrograde in his second house, three degrees off his second house cusp. So maybe this Saturn retrograde, Saturn stationary re retrograde is going to have some impact on his finances. It may be a time when he's very concerned about his finances. You know, he's got a lot of a lot of um, expenses. He's got his his he's got um, he's got his family. He's got his big house in Montecito. Well, you know, I suppose he needs bodyguards. All this stuff that a Prince Harry that Prince Harry needs to pay for. Yeah, it must be really difficult. Um, and so maybe over the next few days, you know, when Saturn goes direct, he's sorry, when Saturn goes stationary, he's going to be very focused on on his on his money. And that would apply to all of us. You know, we could ask ourselves, in what house is Saturn going stationary retrograde? And maybe during that stationary period, that house is going to be strongly affected in our charts. But I'm not I'm not entirely convinced by that. Um, I don't go over the top when I'm looking at a stationary planet in terms of describing its house placement. What I tend to do is look at the midpoints it's on. So if it's very closely on a midpoint, um, I would I would take note of it. So uh, let's look at Harry's midpoints. Now don't be overwhelmed by the midpoints. I'm just giving I'm just using this as an example. So here are Harry's midpoints. Um, and you, you know you can see a great list of them. Let me make this a bit bigger. Um, there's a great list of midpoints here. So 713. So it's at 713 Pisces. That's 713 mutable. So on the 45 degree dial, 713 mutable is the same as 2213 cardinal. So um, where's 2213? So I look down 2213 and I see that at 229 is Harry's sun moon midpoint and at 2210 is his Jupiter Cupido midpoint. Cupido is a hypothetical is a hypothetical planet um, that I do make make some use of. So um, let's, I'm not going to worry too much about the Jupiter Cupido midpoint, but it's a Sun Moon midpoint that I'm really interested in. Um, so let me show you how that let me show you how that works. There's Harry's Sun. There's Harry's Moon. He's got he's got a trine between the Sun and the Moon. Um, that means that the midpoint of his sun and the moon is going to be at 22.9 Cancer. Uh, you can actually see it uh, see it on the uh, see it on the chart. It's quite clear that you got you take the midpoint there. So that that's 22.9 Cancer, and there is. 7, 7.13 Pisces here. Now that means that the Saturn in Pisces is making an 135 degree aspect to the Sun-Moon midpoint. And if you're doing midpoints, the aspects to look for are the conjunctions, the oppositions, the squares, the semi-squares, and the sesquiquadrates. You know, the semi-squares are 45 degrees, the sesquiquadrates are 130, 135 degree, degrees. Don't worry about trines and sextiles. Um, they tend not to work so well with um, midpoints. So what this means is that Saturn is stationing, stationary retrograde on Harry's sun-moon midpoint very closely. And so what does the sun moon midpoint mean? Well, and I should say that if if you find midpoints overwhelming and you feel you don't really want to bother it, bother with them, I would urge you to at least look at your sun moon midpoint. If you don't look at anything else, work out what your sun moon midpoint is. See if you've got any planets in your natal chart that are aspecting the sun moon midpoint. 
and watch your sun moon midpoint very carefully when it comes to transits so you, know, you don't have to worry about other things if you find the sun moon midpoint works then you might want to consider other midpoint pairs but yeah with harry saturn transiting the sun moon midpoint that's got to be important so the sun moon midpoint um according to astrologer um um charles harvey uh, who i'm afraid he he died some time ago i think he died in 2000 in the year 2000 um it is the inner marriage and that makes sense because the sun is you know the male principle the moon is the female principle and you know the midpoint is like the whole solid lunar relationship how they come together how they fuse into each in with each other and so if you've got a natal planet on your aspect in your sun moon midpoint you're likely to express it very very powerfully you know charles harvey liked to use the example of janice joplin who had jupiter aspecting her sun moon mid midpoint and and she was a really larger than life person um with um with with the with the transits um are concerned of with with harry you know that saturn remember that image of stuck in a candle flame saturn is on his sun moon midpoint sun the sun moon is how how harry relates to the outside world it's all his associations of course it's his wife it's it's you know all the contacts that he regards as important plus it's his, his own inner harmony the whole inner masculine feminine harmony and how he is able to you know be as a person and then saturn comes along goes stationary on his sun moon midpoint and i think um it's going to be very difficult for him and so if you happen to have been you know harry's astrologer i'm not quite sure how you would broach the matter um if he'd listen to you or not but uh yeah so i think that that is how that's that's how you should i think look use stationary stationary um the direct stationary retrograde planets you know look at the precise point at which they're stationing on and see if they're aspecting anything in the horoscope and of course see what midpoints they're on because i think that will tell you something um very important anyway i've gone on for long enough about midpoints and i will now look at today's um today's chart so this is a position of planets for friday june the 16th 2023 um at midday um the most important thing going on is that there is a conjunction between the moon and mercury and i would regard this really as being very fortunate i think it's going to be quite easy for most of us to express ourselves you know we've got ideas we can tell people about about our about our ideas and i think that uh, you know people will listen and it's also a good time for just conversation you know it's conversation not about very deep things just you know gemini gemini gossip if we enjoy gossip it'll be fine you know we can talk about lots of different subjects we can catch up with friends it's it's that kind of thing um you know from um an intellectual point of view i think it's really good when the moon and mercury come together because you know the moon is kind of more emotional even if even though it's in gemini and mercury is about communication so you know we can express our feelings um but you know not in a really heavy intense way we can just tell people you know how we feel in a you know in a you know a light-hearted way you know don't you know we don't want to be don't want to be too heavy about it um the moon uh also when it makes the um when it makes after it's made the conjunction to mercury it moves on and makes a sextile to venus so i think in terms of relationships that's that's very good um again keep it light um you know relationships can be developed um you can we can get closer to people but you know don't be you know don't be too heavy about it um 
just you know perhaps it's a good day for going to, going for parties going to parties getting to know people so yeah overall i th you know i think it's i think it's a good day now that's not to say that there aren't a couple of issues today um one issue is the fact that Neptune is aspecting the Venus-Mars midpoint. Um, now, Venus -Mars, the Venus-Mars midpoint is about sexuality. You know, Venus is the planet of female sexuality. Mars is the planet of male sexuality. So you throw Neptune in and you get deception. It's a kind of day when people might get the wrong idea in relationships. You know, they might misinter misinterpret signals. And as a result, um, there could be embarrassment or worse. So, um, you know, in terms of relationships, particularly if you're getting to know someone at a romantic level, be wary of your feelings with Neptune on a Venus-Mars midpoint because you could make some bad mistakes. And, you know, the sexual aspect of any existing relationship could be confusing. Um, there could be misunderstandings. Um, and, you know, you could get into areas you, you don't really want to get into. Um, but Neptune is, yeah, Neptune can be, can be rather nebulous. So there's a bit of a warning there. I, on the other hand, if your relationship is fine, everything is great, it's stable, then yeah, a Neptune on a Venus-Mars midpoint could be ex could be quite exciting and it could be liberating and, um, you know, you could, um, you know, things, things, could be, things could be really good. But all things being equal, just be a bit careful with that if you're involved with in, in, in any kind of relationship, but particularly if there's any any sense of instability there. Um, another interesting midpoint going on today is that Mercury is aspecting the Jupiter Hades midpoint. Hades, hypothetical planet. Mercury is a planet of communication. Jupiter is a planet of expansion, how we want to express our wider vision and Hades is the planet of things that of course the planet of garbage the planet of stuff which is you know a bit dirty and it can be and what that means um, using the interpretation given by Vitter and friends in um, Rules of Planetary Pictures is that we have to be careful of coarse language makes sense doesn't it mercury on the jupiter hades midpoint expressing ourselves in an overtop way and just being being crude and such crudeness may not go down well so be careful what you say don't be tempted to use disgusting language it might seem a right thing to do it might seem to be fun but you might get a bad reaction on the other hand if you hear other people using bad language, don't be too judgmental, you know, put it down to Mercury on the Jupiter Hades midpoint. It'll pass, you know, let them work out for themselves that what they did wasn't the right thing to do. So those are some thoughts about today's astrology. Um, overall, I don't think it's too bad. And I think that the moon Mercury conjunction yeah, is uh, is really positive. Now, as far as my forecasts for the um, as far as my forecast for the um, twelve signs are concerned, here goes. This is for today, Friday, June sixteenth. Aries, you've got lots to say, and you give the impression of being clever. Romance starts with a conversation. Taurus, your financial skills are excellent and in terms of business you'll be very persuasive but don't always believe your own sales pitch. Gemini, things are good and you'll be the centre of attention but be careful what you say. Your language could be surprisingly coarse. After all, Mercury is the ruler of Gemini and it is on at the moment 
the Jupiter-Hades midpoint. Cancer. Your mind is very active, but you don't need other people to demonstrate your cleverness. Solitude, in certain circumstances, can bring luck. Leo, you want things to happen and you might want to force it, but there's no need to be a lone operator. Virgo, at work you can be very effective and your knowledge will be obvious. However, your words must be carefully chosen. Mercury doesn't just rule Gemini, it rules Virgo. Libra, it's a time when you need to move ever so slightly beyond your comfort zone. Be open to ideas that at first hearing seem unusual. Scorpio, your experience of the world is very specific to you and not everyone can deal with it, but your stories can be surprisingly effective. Sagittarius, do listen to what other people are saying, particularly if they are friends and partners. You could learn something important. Capricorn, things are starting to slow down. Yes, Saturn is about to go retrograde and Saturn rules Capricorn. Things are starting to slow down and you may realise that certain things need to be revisited. Partners are talkative. Aquarius, it's okay to enjoy yourself. Indeed, when you are having fun, you are very powerful. Relationships prosper. Pisces, you don't have to go anywhere. Your personal vantage, vantage point is difficult to improve and with familiarity comes confidence. So that's all I'm going to say as far as the astrology is concerned. And now I'm going to move to um, the I Ching. And as usual, through the th I, I threw three coins in the air, asking the question, what what is Friday going to be like for visitors to my YouTube channel? And the hexagram I got, the first hexagram I got was hexagram number five, waiting. This gives us the image, gives us, the, you know, the image of we know that something good is about to happen. We're going to feel that something good is going to happen. We don't know when, but we can be relaxed. You know, so, well, you know, what, ask yourself, what are you waiting for? You know, all of us are waiting for diff something different, but I think we're all waiting for something good to happen. Um, we're not quite, yeah, and I think we're not quite sure when. And I think at the moment we're quite relaxed about it. So in the first, in the first instance, that's good. You know, we, we know, we know it's going to happen, but we just don't, we don't, we're not quite sure when. However, there is a problem because um, this line here, the third line, it moves. Um, and Wilhelm's version of the I Ching talks about waiting in mud. At a certain point, we might start to lose our cool with this waiting game. Um, I don't know whether that's today, whether it's tomorrow. We're just going to say no. I want it now. When is it going to come? Is it not going to come? And we're going to feel stuck. And we might actually find that if we get too obsessed with waiting for something good to happen, this might actually interfere with other things going on in our life. Um, we might feel we can't do this because we're waiting for this to have this other thing to happen. As and as a result, we might stagnate. You know, all of that cool that we, you know, you know that cool dispassionate, um, you know, waiting, you know, when we could just relax, will start to disintegrate. And we could, yeah, we could get so obsessed with waiting for this thing and wanting it to happen that other things get um, get disrupted. And this moves. And it moves, the hexagram moves. Once we, once we knock out that third line, when this third line moves, becomes a broken line. Um, we move to hexagram number 60, which is limitation. And 
that is a limitation that we've got to start to show some discipline. Um, you know, we need to we need to realize that it's it's just not going to happen when we think it's going to happen. But at the same time, the hexagram tells us not to torture ourselves about it. You know, we you know we, there's no reason to wait forever. It's going to happen. Um, but we do have to show some restraint and some discipline. Um, but we mustn't at the same time um, start to convince ourselves that it's never going to happen. And it may be, for example, in certain situations that we may actually have to do something about it, you know, make an inquiry just to move things, just to move things along. And that might be a good idea. So limitation is required, but we mustn't limit ourselves so much that we stop, we, that we stop ourselves achieving what we want to achieve. Anyway, uh, that's all I'm going to say for um, today. And I will talk to you tomorrow.